Welcome back, nerds, to the exciting conclusion of yesterday's notes. Boop! Inth roots and radicals, or something like that. Some bull stuff like that. Let's see what it's called. Inth roots and rational exponents. That's right, that's right. So yesterday, we got all the way through reducing radicals with, variable ex that, with variables that have exponents on them, right? And what we realized at some point in time, we had, I can't remember if this was your notes or period eights notes. It doesn't really matter. You guys have this equation in your notes, correct? Showing you that when you are going to take a root of a variable that has an exponent, what you do is you divide the exponent by the root index, which is n. Remember, square roots, we don't write the twos because we're lazy, but they're there. Anyway, you know what's crazy is yesterday, nobody asked me about when I was doing square roots, why I never put a plus or minus in front of things. This doesn't count because it was already there. Why didn't I put a plus or minus when I was canceling squares with square roots? Because all year I've been telling you, every time you cancel a square with square roots, you have to use a plus or minus, right? Well, as it turns out, that's not the whole truth. There's a lot more to it than just that. Whenever you cancel a square with a square root, the end result will be a plus or minus. But why is the real question. And why did a square root, or excuse me, a plus or minus never have to be used in yesterday's notes? The answer to that question is because I was very careful about the examples that I created. And I made sure that every time we took an even root of an even exponent, the result was still an even exponent. I was very careful not to let any of my exponents be odd after I did an even root. Notice I keep saying even root. That's because I don't care about odd roots. That doesn't do anything. Here's the actual rule. Because even exponents can hide negative numbers from us, there are times when we have to worry about whether or not our results were going to be positive or negative. Because we know that we can't take an even root of a negative number in the real number system. Which is why there was an I here. But more specifically, and it's bold for a reason, if an even root of an even exponent results in an odd exponent, we're going to have to worry about negatives. Now they're possibilities. And because of that, we will use absolute value bars on the resulting variable expression. Every time this year that you've seen me do this, and then do this, I told you what does that create? And a lot of people would say plus or minus. And I mean, it's not wrong. It's just that it cut out the Y. The Y is missing, not the variable Y, the WHY question mark. Why does that work is missing. Okay, now I can actually explain the real truth to you. Yesterday, we talked about this having a root index of 2, and any time we take a root of something with an uh, exponent, you're supposed to divide, right? So divide the exponent. What's really happening here is this. And because I took an even root of an even exponent, resulting in an odd exponent, the true answer is this, the absolute value of x. Do you remember way back to chapter 2 when we were solving absolute value equations? Remember how I told you there's always going to be a positive case and a negative case? That's you setting up the positive case and the negative case. This is the actual result. Okay, so any time you cancel an even root, excuse me, you cancel an even power with an even root resulting in an odd power, you have to use absolute value bars. Yes, ma'am, question in the back. 
that's not a question about the math. Yes, go get your phone. I thought it was going to be like pivotal to the video, so I made her wait. It's about a dumb old cell phone. Here, odd root, nobody cares. The reason why we don't care about these odd roots is because if you raise a positive number to an odd power, you get a positive number. And if you raise a negative number to an odd power, you get a negative number. So it never hides a number's symbol from us. Whereas even powers, twos, fours, sixes, eights, they could hide a negative from us. Okay? So these two examples. Here, I would get x to the third because it's x to the six over two because the root index is a two. But because I have an even root of an even power resulting in an odd power, you must use absolute value bars. Whereas here, I have an even root of an even power resulting in an even power, absolute value bars are not necessary. Because no matter what you do, x to the fourth is going to be a positive number. And that's why they're not necessary there. Whereas x to the third, mm, x to the third could have been negative and we wouldn't have known. All right? You guys comfortable with the when you have to use the absolute value bars? Then let's move on to some examples. Square root of 81x to the 12th. Is 81 a perfect square? Yay! What's its square root? 9. And can I divide 12 by the root index without a remainder? Yay! So that means I don't need to split my x's apart. When the x's come out, what is the new exponent? A 6. And the reason why it's a 6 is because we did this 12 divided by the root index of 2. Are absolute value bars required here? Nope. So even though I canceled an even power with an even root, because the result still had an even power, I don't need absolute value bars. Because no matter what you do, x to the sixth is always going to result in a positive number. Notice for part B, though, the radicand was unaffected. That might be a new word for you. Radicand is the vocabulary for the stuff underneath a radical. You could also call it the argument of the radical. I'm a fan of the word argument um, because it's used a lot in trigonometry, which is a lot of your, your guys' next step in mathematics is pre-calc and trig. But we'll use the academic vocabulary, radicand. It didn't change. It still says 81x to the 12th. What did change is the root index. This time, the root index is a 4. Is 81 a perfect fourth power? crickets. One person gave me what the fourth root is, but the question was, is it a perfect fourth power? So here's what's up. There's probably a large number of you that don't know how to recognize a perfect fourth power without having them memorized. Well, is 81 a perfect square? What's its square root? What's the square root of nine? Three. Because the square root of the because you can take the square root of the square root, that makes it a perfect fourth power. Because remember how I taught you to find fourth powers? I said square the number, square the number, then multiply. All perfect fourth powers are also perfect squares. So if you can take the square root of the square root, you're looking at a perfect fourth power. If you can take the square root of the square root of the square root, you're looking at a perfect sixth power, so on and so forth. And the reason why that works is because power to a power multiplies. Cool with that? So anyway, what is the fourth root of 81? It's the square root of 9. Anyway, what is it? 3. Can I divide the exponent by the root index? Yes, I can. I don't need to split it when x comes out. What is its new exponent? Three are absolute value bars required? Yes, they are. Because we have an even root K 
canceling an even power, resulting in an odd power. Only the x to the third gets the absolute value bars. 3 is 3. It's positive. You don't have to worry about that. And this last example here is on here because it's fun. Because, yes, I would expect you to be able to do this by hand with no calculator. Is it because I think that you have perfect eighth powers memorized? No. It's because I want you to understand how the exponents work. Is 256 a perfect square? Yes, it is. What is its square root? 16. Is 16 a perfect square? Yes. What is its square root? 4. Is 4 a perfect square? Yes. What is its square root? Okay. So what we just found out is that the eighth root of 256 is 2. Because I was able to do the square root three times. Square root 16, square root 4, square root 2, because 2 to the third power is 8. So because I was able to perform square root of the square root of the square root, I know that's an eighth power. Isn't that neat? Will I put that on a test? No. But it's neat. Time to hit you with a truth bomb. Why? Because 2 times 2 is 4. Why? Because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. See how that's working? Hey, I got a question for you. Using that logic, how do you think I would get a 6th root? What's that? A square root of a third root or a third root of a square root? Because again, 3 times 2 is 6. Isn't that neat? You see, when you understand the rules of exponents, all of this kind of stuff really starts to fall into place, right? Anyway, the eighth root of 256, because the square root of the square root of the square root is 2, the eighth root of 256 is 2. Can I divide the exponent by the root index? Sure can. Don't, you, know, you know what? Let's, uh, let's, let's, say, let's say the answer is no. How about we change that exponent to a 5? Just so you can see what happens when the answer is no. How about that? We've actually already done it. You have to split the y's. If I try to divide 25 by 8, what's my remainder? 1. So there's 1 here and the other 24 are here. That means in my answer, I will have a y stuck inside the 8th root. So I just wanted you to see that again. Reminding you that, yeah, things can be stuck inside. Okay? Anyway, when the y comes out, what is its new exponent? 3, because 24 divided by 8 is 3. Does that require absolute value bars? Yes, it does, because I've canceled an even power with an even root, resulting in an odd root. Oh, by the way, there's still an eighth root of y hanging around. There. Just to really drive this idea home. And by the way, first period didn't see this example, so now you're seeing more notes than them. When x comes out, what is its exponent? 2. Does it need absolute value bars? No. When y comes out, what is its exponent? 1. Does it need absolute value bars? Okay? So just really trying to drive it home.
Okay. Time for some of my absolute favorite mathematics because it really sheds some light on some things. Also, it makes students panic sometimes. Do you guys know what the word rational means in mathematics? What do you think it means? Uh, somewhere here, there's a joke about a woman not understanding rational. Uh, but anyway, uh, dang, you okay back there? I said somewhere here, there's a joke. No, no, honestly, though, in mathematics, rational means can be written as a fraction. That's what it means. So like the number 0.3 repeating is a rational number because it can be written as one third. And actually, it's more specifically it can be written as a fraction with nothing but integer values. You see, pi is irrational because there is no way to write a fraction that equals exactly pi without using pi in the fraction, which makes it irrational. So what is a rational exponent? Guess what? I had some fun writing this. Like it says, guess what? Chicken butt. No, it says, guess what? Radicals are exponents. <gasps> There's no such thing as the square root. There's no such thing as the third root. There's no such thing as the fourth root. There's only fractional exponents. All radicals are exponents, specifically fractional exponents. But how? Well, it uses the idea of power to a power. You all accepted this as a truth when I said, when you take the root of something with an exponent, you just divide. You all just kind of accepted it as true, right? But what if I reminded you, not even told you, what if I remind you there's no such thing as division? There's no such thing as dividing by two. There is only multiplying by one half. So instead of saying eight over two, I could have written it as what you see here, which is actually too small. So I'm going to write it larger. X raised to the eight times one half. And if you recall, multiplying exponents is a result of power to a power. Which is why the division occurs. It's because square root is just a fancy symbol that's used for the one half power. Cube root is just a fancy symbol for the one third power. Right here, I told you divide. But the reason why it's division is because the nth root is just a fancy way of saying the one over n power. B to the one over n is the n nth root of b. More mind bombs. Yesterday, we wrote this. But using our newfound knowledge, we know that's this. which we recognize as m over n because when you raise a power to power, you multiply, and m times 1 over n is m over n. But the order of multiplication doesn't matter, does it? Here's me just changing the order of multiplication. And if raising something to the 1 over n is just the nth root, this can be written as this. These two things are the same. Because the order of multiplication doesn't matter, that means the order of exponentiation, that's a word, doesn't matter. You can choose which exponent to use first. You may be wondering why you would ever want to do this. 
I'll show you in a few minutes. What do you think about that? Isn't that neat? You've been lied to all this time. There is no such thing as a radical. There are only fraction exponents. Wait a minute, I forgot the other mind bomb. Your whole math career, when you've learned about radicals, you were told we use square roots to cancel squares. We use third roots to cancel cubes. We use fourth roots to cancel fourth powers. You've been told these things. Were you ever told why? No, you weren't. You were just told this is the opposite of that, so they cancel each other. And you accepted it as true. But why do those two symbols cancel each other? Oh, the reason why? is because there's no such thing as a radical. There's only fractional exponents. And what's neat about the numbers three and one third? What relationship do those two numbers have? They're reciprocals. And what do you get every time you multiply reciprocals? That's why radicals cancel exponents because radicals are reciprocal exponents. So a fourth root cancels a fourth power because they're reciprocal exponents. And when you raise a power to a power, you end up multiplying those exponents, which gets you one every time, thereby canceling. Isn't that so freaking cool? Truths, baby. All right, let's put it into use. No, my sign. My sign just tried to run away. I caught it. I caught it. We're going to write these two things in radical form. The denominator. Actually, you know what? I don't want to skip that step. Let's write 5 thirds as 5 times 1 third. Let's write it as five times one third. And then we can remember that multiplication of exponents occurs when we have a power raised to a power. And then we go, oh, that's right. The one third power, we write that as the cube root. But because the order of multiplication doesn't matter, this mind bomb showed us that an exponent that's inside a radical could be in or out. They're the same thing. This is easier to look at. And when I have to write things in variable expressions, like meaning I don't get a numeric answer, I will always write this. So when would I do something like this? I'll show you in a minute. Yes, sir. The reason why odd roots don't have to worry about absolute value bars is because the cube root of negative one is a negative number. It's because when you raise an, a negative number to any odd power, you're going to get back a negative number. And that means you're allowed to take odd roots of negative numbers. It's because you're not allowed to take even roots of negative numbers that cause us to use the absolute value bars. That's why. This one. You know what would be great is if I could go directly from here to these two things without having to go through this process. It's already in the notes. You could see it. So I'm going to do that. I'll write it as both correct things. I could say it is the seventh root of x to the fourth. Or I could say it's the seventh root of x. All raised to the fourth. They're exactly the same thing. Order of multiplication doesn't matter. That means order of exponentiation doesn't matter.
When you're writing things in exponential form, though, there's really only one way to do it. You just write it in exponential form. The only ca uh, caveat to that is I would say try to keep your exponents positive. So if they're going to be negative, deal with that the way that we talked about yesterday. Move them across their own fraction bar. Okay. It says write this in exponential form. So I'll show the work once. Fifth roots are not a thing. There are only one-fifth powers. And power to a power tells us to multiply our exponents. So we get x to the four-fifths. There. But what would be really great is if you could skip over the work and know that the root type is always the bottom of the fractional exponent. Because radicals are reciprocal exponents. That means they're always going to end up on the bottom. Cool? Four through to seven. There's only one way to write this. Seven raised to the one-fourth. There it is, yeah. Seven raised to the one-fourth. Done. Someone last period, well, last algebra two period, which is first period, asked me, could any number be the root type. Yes, it can be. Any number could be a root type. Even pi, even though it's not a pretty number. I could say, I could take the, I could take the square root of two-th root, which is a weird thing to say, but I could do it. I could take the pi -th root, which is a weird thing to say, but I could do it. Okay? Any number can be a root type. Any real number could be a root type. Now check this out. Oh, I haven't told you guys yet. Here it is on video, so no one can ever claim that they didn't hear it. Your test is Thursday of next week. Your mid-chapter test is Thursday of next week. Yeah, the mid-chapter test. We've learned half the chapter now. There's only six sections. Psst. It's going to be no calculator. No calculator. None at all. But why would I do that? Because I'm going to put questions like this on there. You should be able to find 36 raised to the negative 3 over 2 by hand. No calculator needed. So before you panic, let's take this puzzle apart. First thing I see is a negative exponent. When things have negative exponents, what do we do with them? How do we make the exponent positive? Move whatever has a negative exponent to the other side of the fraction bar. Mr. M, what fraction bar? This one. So we need that 36 to move to the bottom of that fraction bar. When it moves to the bottom, the exponent becomes positive. And we now know what the 3 over 2 power represents. It represents the power of 3 and the power of 1 half. But what does the power of 1 half mean? Square root. So this is actually saying this. 1 over the square root of 36 to the third power. Remember, it's no calculator. Do you know what 36 to the third power is? Let's say you did 36 times 36 times 36 by hand. You could get a number, right? Do you think you would know what the square root of that number is? No. Man, that sucks, doesn't it? So how do I expect you to do it without a calculator? Oh, I expect you to understand that the order of exponentiation doesn't matter. You know the square root of 36, don't you? Yeah, it's 6. And 6 to the 3rd was one of the ones that I told you you need to know by, hand, by heart. It's 216. There. I just found 36 raised to the negative 3 halves by hand. Ta-da. And we use nothing but exponent rules to get there. The one thing you need to know is what 6 to the 3rd is. 
And worst case scenario, you could do six times six, get 36 and do 36 times six on some scrap paper and get 216. That's, that's the hardest part about this. It literally is knowing that six to the third is 216. 81 to the three fourths. What are we going to do? Someone tell me what to do. Um, there's so many people that never talk to me. Why? I mean, I, you, you talk to me sometimes. You two talk to me. Jared talks to me. I got so many people that never speak to me. So many. It's like the back of the room never talks to me. Why is that? Okay, occasion, occasionally Donald talks. Occasion, occasionally Trenton talks. Occasionally. Why? Scared of what? Being wrong? Pfft, welcome to being a man and dating a woman. Anyway, you're always wrong, guys. Remember that. That's why guys are less afraid to be wrong because we're told we're wrong all the time. Even though we're not. Uh, anyway, um... Want to help me? Why not? Because why? Of what? Of being wrong? Psh. Shame. Hey, shame. You can tell me what to do? All right, I'm going to do it myself then. Here's what I'm going to do. I don't know what 81 to the third power is. That's a really big number. So what instead I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fourth root of 81 and then I'm going to raise it to the third power. And even if you don't know what the fourth root of something is, remember it's the square root of the square root. So you could say the square root of the square root of 89, or excuse me, of 81 is 3. This actually says 3 to the third then, which is 27. Look how easy this is. You have a question. Okay. What? Wait, what? You mean, why did I make four the root type? Because that's the rule? Because radicals are reciprocal exponents. Because what is the fourth root of... Here, would it help if I did this? What's the fourth root of 81? Okay, stop. Hold on. No, Allie, stop. Allie. And the square root of 9 is? Which is what exactly what we did as a class a moment ago. I don't know where we were when we did it, but that's exactly what we did. Mm. The, okay, a fractional exponent's denominator is always a root type. It's an exponent. It can either go in or out. It doesn't matter. But it's easier if it's out when you have to do that. Okay. Everybody's worst nightmare. Math with fractions. Here it goes. We are going to simplify each expression. We're going to write our answers in exponent form, meaning I want my answers to look like this. And we need our exponents to be positive. Okay? Okay. First things first. How am I going to write the cube root of x squared as an exponent. X to the two thirds times and square root of X as an exponent is X to the one half exponent rules. When you multiply two numbers with the same base, what do you do with those exponents? Add them X to the two thirds plus one half. Uh oh. What's required to add or subtract fractions? Common denominator. And what is the common denominator? Six. Six. That means I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this by two, the top and bottom of this by three, getting me to x to the four over six plus three over six, x to the seven over six. That mean, and So I'm going to write it in, in radical form just so you can see how it compares to the original. There is no way I would have pulled this out of a hat from that. I would be forced to go through the fractions and then convert back. There's no, I, I, I can't. I just can't. I'm sure people can. I can't. 
Next, fourth root is what exponent? Lots of people should be saying this answer. Fourth root is what exponent? One fourth. On the bottom, what's my exponent? Five over eight, five eighths. When you divide two numbers at the same base, what do you do with the exponents? Subtract, and it's always gonna be top minus bottom if you can't determine which one is larger. We're gonna pretend we couldn't determine which one was larger. But like we said before, you need a common denominator. What is the common denominator? Eight, well that's good, because that one's already an eight. So you just multiply the top and bottom of this one by two, giving us x to the two over eight minus five over eight. That's x to the negative three over eight, and that's not allowed. I want a positive exponent. So what do we do with things that have negative exponents? Move it to the other side of its own fraction bar, giving us one over x to the three over eight. You want to know what's cool about this question? I could have written it like this. Look, fractional exponent, where the bottom is the root type. I could have written it like that. I didn't, it doesn't matter. I have x to the six over five being raised to uh, fourth root is what power again? One fourth, yeah. And when you raise a power to power, what do you do with your exponents? Is it only one person that knows that or do you all know that? That you're supposed to multiply when you raise a power to power? I hope it's all. And when you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across. You just have to make sure you reduce. It's not one half. 10 over 20 is one half. No, five times four is 20. Anyway, you divide six and 20 by two and you get three tenths, x to the three over 10. So that means this radical is also the same as this radical. Who would have known? Who would have known that all three of those radicals are the same? But this is the answer I was looking for. What? Wait for what? She says, wait a minute. What's up? We good? X to the three tenths. Nerds.